Please join me in welcoming Peter Callahan and Leah Pinson to the stage. Thank you, Steve. It is absolutely great to be here hosting Canada's Top Ten. And to be able to help celebrate the talent and vision of so many wonderful Canadian filmmakers. Yes, so many wonderful Canadian filmmakers who may well be in a position to hire us next year. <laughs> but I digress because I've gone off script. And such an amazing group of films. As always, this year's list showcased the diversity of Canadian film, ranging from prestigious star-studded adaptations of celebrated novels to micro-budget independent features, from spine-tingling horror movies to powerful dramas. And those are just the short films. Speaking of shorts, uh, let's get started. Here are Canada's top 10 short films of the year, listed alphabetically. From Greg Atkins comes Above the Knee, the story of a man who challenges the status quo with his office wear. Vincent Biron's Les Fleurs de l'Age infuses extraordinary beauty into an ordinary childhood summer day. Anne-Marie Fleming's moving animated film, I Was a Child of Holocaust Survivors, captures Bernice Eisenstein's memoir about living with and letting go of the past. Jerome Sable's The Legend of Beaver Dam brings music, horror, and comedy to a fireside story at a summer camp. Theodore Ushev's experimental documentary, Lipsit Diaries, explores the creativity and emotional tumult that defined filmmaker Arthur Lipsit's life. Sexuality, desire, and memory intertwine in Guy Madden's salute to legendary underground queer filmmaker Jack Smith in The Little White Cloud That Cried. I love that title. Emmanuel Hoss de Marais' Marius Borodin tells the story of an inventor who was thwarted on the brink of completing his master creation. Halima Uardi, uh, Uardi, Uardi I practice that so Take much. Take three. <laughs> Mokhtar brings to life the folktale of a young boy in rural Morocco who adopts an owl and in the process stakes out his independence. In On the Way to the Sea, director Dao Gu visits his parents' home to capture the physical and emotional aftermath of the 2008 earthquake in China. Kave Nabadzi, now you see I practiced that. Kave Nabatian brings us a stunning portrait of a shattered man who confronts his deep-seated phobias in vapor. And here with us tonight are the following filmmakers. Greg Atkins, Vincent Biron, Anne-Marie Fleming, Guy Madden, Hali, Halima Urardiri, Huadiri, Aunan Yang. I gotta get this one right to show you. <laughs> Kave Nabatian. Congratulations to all of you. Now, uh, here are Canada's top 10 feature films of the year listed alphabetically. Xavier Dolan's Les Amours Imaginaires with sufficient... I'm going to take a pause there. Xavier Dolan's Les Amours Imaginaires. <laughs> with sophisticated humor and extraordinary style, Wonderkind Xavier Dolan tells the story of two longtime friends who compete for the same man reminding us of a time when falling in and out of love took precedence over eating, drinking, and breathing. Richard Lewis's Barney's version. Based on Mordecai Richler's beloved novel, the exquisitely adapted Barney's version tells a story that spans several continents, decades, and multiple wives. It's the story of a not-so-ordinary man, Paul Giamatti gives us a brilliant performance, so brilliant packed that apparently he just got a Golden Globe nomination for it, alongside a great cast including Dustin Hoffman and Scott Speedman. And here with us tonight are producer Robert Lantosh, writer Michael Conovis, uh, actor Clay Bennett, and executive producer Ari Lantosh. <laughs> Denis Cote's Curling. Celebrated filmmaker Denis Cote returns to Canada's top ten with this deeply compassionate tale of the isolated existence of a single father and his only daughter, which boasts rich supporting characters, understated humor, and one of the most memorable opening shots of the year. Deborah Chow's The High Cost of Living. Yeah. 
Deborah Chow's impressive and extremely perceptive first feature captures a fateful collision between an unlikely pair, beautifully played by Isabel Blay and Zach Braff. With this film, Chow establishes herself as an exciting new voice in the Canadian film landscape. Here with us tonight are director Deborah Chow and actor Isabel Blay. Denis Villeneuve's Incendie in what may be uh, in what may be his most masterful and riveting work to date. Award-winning director Denis Villeneuve presents a rich, emotionally devastating film of a brother and sister's epic and ferocious quest to uncover the truth about their mother's past. Here with us tonight are producer Luc Derry and actor Melissa Desarmont Poulain. Lee Shine fans Last Train Home. Last Train Home is an insightful and moving film, part expose of China's infrastructure problems, part family portrait, which draws viewers into the fractured lives of the Jiang family who are caught up in one of the world's largest annual migrations. Here with us tonight are director Li Shine Fan and producer Mila Ong Swin. Just for the pronunciation, I Ingrid Venager's Modra. In her first solo feature, Ingrid Venager delivers an intimate and quirky portrait of teenage self-discovery, combining a documentarian sense of truth with a sumptuous visual style and great performances from a cast of first-timers, creating a film that is both utterly honest and beautifully cinematic. Here with us tonight are director Ingrid Venager and actors Haley Switzer and Alexander Gamal, sound recordist John Switzer. Vincenzo's Natale's Splice. Sci-fi meets horror with a body slam in Natale's High Concept Frankenstein, which stars Adrian Brody and Sarah Polly as rebel scientists who push the boundaries of scientific engineering with devastating consequences. Here with us tonight is writer Doug Taylor and actor Brandon McGibbon. Bruce McDonald's Trigger. A kind of distaff rock version of My Dinner with Andre, Bruce McDonald delivers a character-rich reunion story of a highly dysfunctional yet endearing rock duo played with courage, skill, and sensitivity by Molly Parker and one of our finest actresses, the late Tracy Wright. Here with us tonight are producers Jennifer Jonas and Leonard Farlinger, Don, actor Don McKellar, cinematographer Jonathan Cliff, editor Matthew Hannam, executive producer Danny Chieson, and director Bruce McDonald. Catherine Martin's Trois Temps Après la Mort d'Anna is an elegant, yeah is an elegant and mesmerizing story of a mother's struggle to cope with the senseless loss of her daughter. Driven by a phenomenal performance by Guilain Tremblay and directed with astonishing sensitivity by one of our best filmmakers, here with us tonight is director Catherine Martin. So congratulations to all the filmmakers and feast your eyes on the screens for a sneak peek of Canada's top 10 short films and feature films of 2010.